Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. From LR Time. And in this week's episode, we're gonna build this high pressure water tank, which can be used as a shower and show you every detail and step on the way how we put it on Fabian's Discovery 3 on his front runner roof rack. Hope you enjoy the video. So the plan is to put a high pressure water tank up there. Constructed out of 125 millimeter PVC U pipe and the problem we got is that this will be Fabian's future rooftop tent. He wants to sleep in a cardboard box. <laughs> the size of the tent is so that it sticks out this far. Wait a second. Okay, that's quite a bit. It's that, what is that called? James Baru. It's also sticking out in the front a little bit and it has about this height. So if we want to get a beefy water tank up there, we got only this room here to mount it. And we got to get some custom made mounts to the roof rack out of aluminum because we don't want it to weigh a ton. So I got now the entire assembly glued up. So we got a three quarter inch ISO thread fitting here with a reducer from 50 to 75. And this is a reducer from 125 to 70. 125 millimeters so of five inch PVC U pipe, a union. And here we got a 45 degree elbow in 125 
and we got a half inch hole drilled in here and the face here spotted so this is for the water drain now this is the fill cap which goes in here I'm missing one reducer so I can't glue this one in this is a three inch cap so plenty of excess and it got a rubber gasket and the glue I used is this stuff here and this is the cleaner I used plenty of cleaner plenty of glue really important camera is running I am okay. scrolling so, um, so this is a reducer and this is gonna go in here right so we're gonna glue in first one and then the other and this doesn't fit that is not good one pipe fitting is out of spec see it got 125.3 125 and what it's supposed to be 125 let's see if it fits oh, I got this stuff now all over me a little yeah, bit out of round but yeah now it fits we can glue it like this. First you gotta use the cleaner, the PVC cleaner. Use plenty of it and wipe this till it feels a little bit sticky. Yeah, it kind of dissolves the surface. Mm -hmm. Take your time, do that really, really careful. Especially when your wife is watching. After cleaning it, we don't want to touch it anymore. Now this is the glue. I shaked this before really hard. Okay, this got to go really quickly now. Okay, so I wipe it out. I don't wipe it around. This is important. And I use more than you would think I use. This is important to use plenty because you got only one chance. Oh boy. And the whole process gotta be done in less than three minutes. Now this one. It smells like crazy, yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna pass out soon, yeah. So this is good. Now let's hope this one goes in. Yeah, this one went in perfect. Just wipe the glue off and that's it. What I want to do is solder on here a mounting feature for a housing. So I'm going to solder this on here and this one on here.
So this is a seven bar pressure relief valve we're gonna install. I really hope this works, it's half inch. So we'll see if this is gonna work. Just about here. So, let's try this. So we'll start with 30 PSI. Watch it. So this is ceiling. So here. So here's the gauge. So I'm gonna crank up the pressure. That's three bar now. I think we have to put silicone grease on here. Looking good, except that it's raining. Are we over here right now? Well, I I have you okay. spraying good. stuff. Okay, then, that's then enough. Here. So we got our overpressure valve, which we have not tested yet at seven bar, because I don't want to be around when we charge this to seven bar. We got here this air connection with a check valve in it here, a gauge, and we are right now at four bar, and this is Vera. And there we got a union, and then this joint, and it's raining. 240 grit. So we're gonna wipe the entire assembly off with acetone. So I got chemical resistant cloths. So he complained that I don't do enough. <laughs> I'm not complaining that you don't do enough, I'm complaining that you're not filming. Because nobody wants their have footage from a tripod. <laughs> and then we're gonna spray on a special primer for PVC, something Fabian bought. So I'm sure it works. Oh yeah, you sure it works? Yeah, because we would have bought the cheapest version and Fabian always buys the most expensive version. This is, this is the ultimate trick when you paint something and you need a nice corner. You use these. They are the, the rails you got here in the corners of the plaster. Yeah. So I got those left over from renovating the house and I keep using them for painting jobs. Yeah, very cool. So it's hard to see where you got it already on. No, Christian, your etching is not dry. Don't do that. No, because we always have problems that the paint is not going to dry. It's dry. Let me touch. It's dry. Don't put your... I don't have to add it. It's yes, not dry. It's dry. No. It's the same. I read the instruction. It says 10 minutes and it's extremely hot today. It's Australian temperature. Winter temperature. It's okay, can you focus on my doing here? No, not really. 
This needs to be painted wet and wet a little bit. Okay, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> okay, now I'm done over here. This is 12 millimeter aluminum plate and we have to cut this out on the bandsaw. This one eight point zero. Yeah. This is hand center punch and yeah. feel this. It has no play. Yeah, some things just need to be done with your hands. Yeah. Where are my nuts? This is our screw storage rack. Storage rack, exactly. It's and there is no system, you know. It's, it's and I have to go from the garage to here. I know exactly and, what I'm looking Yeah, for. but you you are not yeah, looking you're not for focusing it. on my project. No, what I wanna say is and you're I not basically on my I basically have to open every can, can little on my drawer to find what I'm yeah. looking for. See this this is getting now bolt it together like this. So you saw that the long bolts are in here? There is a big wall here in between. That chop, the metal chop, and that chop. And he wants to tear it down. I bought three millimeter self-adhesive rubber to put in here. This way, if there is any kind of unroundness here from my machining, the rubber is going to take care of that a little bit. That was only 20 euros. Oh my God. Yeah. No. Okay, I gotta interrupt this work here and mow my lawn quickly before it starts raining. So I gotta drill these holes at 160 in between. Third package arriving from Amazon for you today. No, this is not me. Countersink bits or whatever. Mine are completely worn out. There we go. Now we got to drill these here, 10 millimeter from the side, 80 millimeters apart. Last one.
So I got these all polished and clean and I had to make some changes to my drawings. I should have dimensioned that for as a, with a zero point so that I can use my cross table to go to all the coordinates. So, what do you want to do here today? Oh yes, <laughs> looking for a shower. Huh? So I got the components here. I made, I made nice drawings. This part, not easy to make. And then I made these plates here, and we're gonna attach them together like this. And this is what it's supposed to look like when we're done. Okay, look, it's really complicated. There is a longer one which always goes in the back. The longer one goes in here. So we're gonna mount this one first. Yeah, the one in the back. Look, he's got my Freelander sticker on. So now I can take the camera. <gasps> yeah, that doesn't look bad. What? Yeah. That's the only spot where it goes. And now we're gonna lift in the tank. We said the tent is going to be even here in the... So it would have to be hold it yeah. further down this way, a little higher up. But I think this looks first okay. Yeah. 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 Don't let it drop. The roof tent will stick out actually. What did we say? Mm, maybe 12 centimeters on both sides. 12. So this is how far the roof tent will go out. Yeah. And we can see we got a little gap below. No, it's stuck. No, it's not. So, okay. Noch eine no, I, I Hier auch noch eine? Two. <laughs> Oh, I've got it in. So I'm gonna be, I'm on top of the rooftop and I'm gonna stay there and film from here. Yeah, you got a stupid so, ladder. Okay, I'm not I gonna use that one anymore. I'm gonna have to drill a new hole. So there's some minor adjustment in my German engineering. Yeah, well, it's tough when the car is not here, you know. Well, where does it have to go? Far to me. It's our plum tree, you know. I think I have five of those, and it's carrying a lot of plums. So this got to go on here now. Wait, I gotta move in closer. And, and it's freshly touched up with paint. If you ruin and your shirt, I'm gonna be mad. I bought this shirt. But I don't care. I. <laughs> I bought it at Kmart. No, Christian, we don't shop at Kmart. I Rob shops at Kmart, so whenever I'm over there... Is it not cold? No, it's... Or uh, it's, Myers? It's Kmart. He always runs into Kmart and then he ah, buys stuff and he runs we back We never home. shopped at Kmart. How okay. are you going to tighten those okay. so screws once the rooftop tent is on top? You're going to have to do that before the rooftop oh. tent is on top. Yeah. <laughs> here, we can get from to it from here. Give it to me. Okay. Where is it? Front or back? Here. In the back. Yeah. Easy. Done. Perfect. <laughs> Second one. I used to be a professional fitter. Yeah. Is that the right UK term for a mechanic assembly guy? Yeah. When he was like 16, 17. Okay. What is it? It's a plum tree. A plum tree. I'm sorry. A plum tree. I'm going to grant you a lifetime warranty on this setup. When my life is over, the warranty is ending. Right. <laughs> Luna. Luna is not listening today. <laughs> okay. So now what I got to do is cut these, uh, these rubber strips we're going to put on. Yeah. We're going to have to go to the hospital because you're falling off the car. No. And I've so just learned that. Rubber strips from Amazon. And it said three millimeter in the description. And what does it but have? But they are three point four. Oh. And because of that, I had to make a really complicated cut here using a Wohlhaupter cutting head, which I got from my dad sixteen years ago. 
That's the reason I had to do that because Amazon said it's three millimeter, but it's three point four, and this is all precision stuff, right? Oh. This is nice, like this, yeah. Okay. And uh, then I bought this stuff because I said, nah, it's probably a good idea to have a piece of rubber there. Look how nice that looks. And I could use my Wohlhaupter cutting head. I don't know what yeah? that is. I mean, even Abum 69 would appreciate that piece. Mm, if I wouldn't, he would be complaining. He's got no content. <laughs> You're not filming anything. What kind of shop is that? It's a close-up. I got already now seven hours of footage. You know why Fabia needs to do that? Because he's so particular on me scratching his stuff. No. Okay, this is looking good. Mm -hmm, there's a little gap. Yeah, we can adjust this now. So these are the spares. You can take them. I got about a thousand of them mm -hmm. out of our trash container at work. And here what I did, because I'm so cheap, this is how they usually come out of the store. Mm -hmm. And I just used both halves and I drilled these open. So we save six dollars. I left these on because you never know, maybe you need it. And I would say we put one in the front. Mm -hmm. oh, we are Looks not paying all black. enough attention to yes, Christian. Yes, you're not paying enough attention. If my design is correct, a two millimeter gap between these and these. So you don't want to pull them all flat and bend them. So this goes in here. And this goes in here. Okay, what we got to do now is put the water installation on here, um, which is also maybe I, I kind of got a little excited doing this, so I over engineered it. <laughs> <laughs> a nice Festo gauge, a couple of reducers, and this is a pressure over pressure valve set to seven bar. What this does is it's got a spring inside, and when the water pressure pushes here, this would push this cap out, and the water would jump out here. And then I soldered on two posts in order to put a cover on. But that's not Loctite, that's Teflon. Did I say Loctite? Yes. I use Teflon tape. <laughs> I'm stupid. Okay, thank you for correcting me. And I had it in last time and I turned it by hand with a good amount of torque. But I didn't. Newton no, I didn't really yeah. overdo it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of over engineered this a little bit. I 3D printed a nice cover for this. So this goes on here like this and like this. Yeah. And I I kind of overdone it because I even put in I even put in little dowel pins here to locate <laughs> the two halves to each other. Yeah. So okay, but once you you know designing you get carried away, then here's the opening for the gauge and there this can go either way because I didn't know where this ends up. And and another thing, I put an o-ring on here so it doesn't rattle around. So this O-ring has like an O-ring groove here. Oh my God. <laughs> this way it's, it's nicely tight here. And this goes on like this, yeah. And then I was planning on putting bolts in, um, like these. Yeah, but we put these in for now, just so it's on, yeah. Now we gotta do the other end. We take this off here. Got this mask from painting. And there is a thread drilled in here on the bottom, right there. That's a half inch thread. And it goes through the thick wall elbow. You can get these elbows in thick wall and in eco. If you would get them in eco, you don't have enough thread available. So it's important to use the non-eco ones, the mm -hmm. full size. And now there is a cap, which I didn't paint because the paint's gonna rub off. And you have to put silicone grease on here. Without silicone grease, it does not seal. Yeah, cap goes on here like this. This way you can use two hands and tighten it. Without silicone grease, you don't get it tight. So we'll put, we'll put this one on. I had it in there before, did a pressure test, and it was all good. With how many PSI? I did four bars so far. So this goes in here, it's close on the cover. And I think in the back it looks the best. 
like this. And you can see this is in a straight angle here. This is done this way because you never know if you want to put this on on this side or on the other side. It looks like somebody is carrying a nuclear weapon on a car. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Now the car is now leaning downhill. If you imagine now an imaginary line here, yeah, it will fill only like to here, which will give you a very large air pocket. And for a bar, the air pocket is large enough to drain the entire tank under pressure, which is really nice. Yeah? But we still have to tighten the screws. No, we leave it like this. To see if it if it works and it's waterproof. Oh, ah, the water is coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so when I put the cap on, Vera can't get it back off, so it's kind of yeah. child proof is not the right word, <laughs> but it's Vera proof. Yeah. And notice that we wanted the cap like this and that was a T coming up because the T builds up really high. Fabian and I discussed this and the roof tent is going over it and the T would have to sit behind the roof tent. It would be all ugly. So we decided to use a 45 and then also a large cap where you can fill it with a... I don't know. What's a geese can in English? I put it in writing mm -hmm. below. But you can also fill it with a bucket out of a river in the worst case without using a funnel. Because I'm using now a permanent supply pressure here with 8 bar out of my shop. I put a regulator in between so we don't destroy anything. This is something you wouldn't need when you use your own compressor and... A watering can. But that's like a stupid okay. thing. A watering can. See this fitting yeah. has also a check in it. This is why there is no air coming out now. And as soon as I plug it in, it opens these two checks and then it will fill it here to this pressure. Mm -hmm. It's now in here. Now it's filling out of my compressor the tank. Here you can see we got two bars. Yeah. And now I'm going to increase the pressure to four bar. If I take this off now, because it's a fitting with a check, it's waterproof. If you would want a Schrader valve on here now, we make one of these with a Schrader valve attachment. You put it on and then you got a Schrader valve and you keep this thing in the car. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. <sighs> Can we move forward? No. Okay, you bought this. This is really high quality stuff. That's better than what I have in my garden. Okay, we put this on here. This has its own valve, so I can open this now if I want to all the way. Steady screw. Wow. <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs> Isn't that something else? Luna, what's going okay, on here? I can do if I want a water sensitive plant. Or if I need it for washing my dishes. This is dishes. Luna, <laughs> come here. I, I yeah. don't think you're yeah. going to be successful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How long you can shower now under full pressure? Yeah. And I let it now run like this. So we have 47. We still got water. I would say we recharge it now. <laughs> You're standing back. I go back, yeah. Five bar is... I wouldn't put more in. The Eco style is rated for 10 bar, but the style we used, the heavy duty style, which is a little heavier wall, it's actually 15 bar. Look at that. Oh, we can see this. water type Nearly two minutes. That is enough to take a shower. It definitely yeah, is enough. Yeah, definitely. So stop. 220 under full pressure. Under full pressure. Yeah. yeah. Now watch it. So the capacity, the capacity, yeah, it's okay. It's not going to be so bad. It's about 20 liters, I think, right? You need to keep an air bubble. Without an air bubble, you cannot get enough pressure built up or enough volume built up to drive all the water out. So you have to keep about a fifth of the capacity for air bubble. I don't get showered. I think that's all I got. <laughs> now see when I actuate it now. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> the reason it's leaking 
The spring can't seat it anymore. No. Now it's sealed again. Clicking now. This is what I meant. It has now more pressure than, than it permits. And now it's leaking out that pressure slowly. Yeah. Yeah? That's already more than the Gardena stuff is rated for. Oh. Now look at that. Then the water actually runs out before the air pressure. So that's it for this week's video. We got the high pressure water tank installed on Fabian's front runner roof rack on his Discovery 3. The sink can be mounted on the left side or on the right side of the front runner. Believe it or not, this was a lot of work to build. There were a lot of steps, as you saw in the video, to get it completed. And in addition to that, there was all this communication Fabian and I did about the design. I submitted 3D drawings to him and then I got text messages back that they ain't no good. <laughs> and I had to change them. And right now my design file says version 4 on it. 4.0. <laughs> For you guys in the US, this is a metric design. If you convert this into inches, it would be 5 inch tubing. Mm -hmm. 4 inch, in our opinion, is too small. Fabian bought 4 inch and we gave it all back. Then we ordered 5 inch and I think 6 inch would look too bulky. Is it still flashing here? Yeah. Um, I think that's it for this week's video. I hope you like this content. If you like the video, think about subscribing, give it a thumbs up and as always in any case, do not unsubscribe. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Good. <laughs>